Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. I think today my message is going to be longer than the announcement, so don't worry. God is good. Got some good things to share with you today from God's Word. Last uh, time we were reading in Matthew, we did the Beatitudes. That was two weeks ago. We took a break last week for Mother's Day to share something important about the value of life. How many walked away from last week's message as we learned about life being a vapor and valuable to Christ? How many were blessed by that, walked away different? Amen. I, I just really shared my heart with you that day, and I hope that it, it was a blessing. Today I want to share with you the message, salt and light. Everybody say, salt and light. Thank you. This is uh, going right along with the message that I was just sharing during announcements about us being disciples. And now I want you to hear it from Jesus out of Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and to be trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Can everybody say salt and light? Thank you. Today's message is here to encourage you to be who God called you to be. If you are born again and you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you are the salt and light of this world. It's not like you're going to be salt or light. No, you already are. Now, if you're here today and you haven't accepted Jesus into your heart, we love you. We're glad you're here. Someone will be up here to pray with you at the end of this service so that you can be born again and accept Christ into your life. But at that moment, you accept Christ into your life, this will apply to you. So there's nobody here that this doesn't apply to. First and foremost, how many here have asked Jesus into their heart? Can I see you raise your hands in the air? Can I see you wave them like you just care? Come on, amen, amen. You love Jesus, right? You, you accepted the Lord. How many are happy you accepted Jesus? How many, if you could do it over again, you would have done it a lot sooner? Hey, come on. Get back your 20s. Get back your teens. Get back your 30s, 40s, and 50s, however old you were when you first accepted them. I wish I could get back my teenage years. But all of us now who raised our hands, this is not a suggestion from God. This is not something for the spiritually elite. Like as if there's three different levels in the kingdom. There's the salt and the light, and then there's the people who just show up on Sundays and become bumps on a log. There's not three different options here. The moment you accept Christ, this is what you are. You are now salt and you are now light. And I want to encourage you to be who you are. Now, is there anybody here, please don't raise hands because I don't want to embarrass anybody here, but is there any men here that wake up in the morning and struggle being a man? Maybe you look at yourself and you go, I don't know if I'm a man today. I kind of feel like a woman. Now, there are people in our culture who deal with that, and there's a, a place of prayer for you up here as well. And we welcome you, whatever you're dealing with. But the most part, is there any men that wake up here today and go, I'm going to try real hard to be a man today. Maybe when some of us were young men, we wanted some of the hair on the chest so we would, you know, pour some of that alcohol on there and try to get the hair on the chest or whatever would make us my cheese. Mom, I'm telling on myself here a little bit. Or shave three times a day because they say if you shaved more, it would come out. Is there any women here? I mean, that look in the mirror and go, I just want to be a woman today. Mm, here I go. Now there's women that don't think they're beautiful or fabulous, and they look at these, uh, these you know, fake plastic images on newspaper ads, and I'm not talking about that, because that's not a woman. That's, that's a cartoon. That's a fictional picture. Can I hear an amen? And we know women that that has changed over the years, and it's become so outlandish that now in the supermodel industry, they're actually having to have tests for them if they're anorexic now to see if they can even continue to, to be models. And it's like, well, if you think that's a problem, will you stop asking them to model your clothes? Get some normal, full-figured, healthy women to model your clothes. Can I hear an amen from the sisters right now? Amen. 
So we don't look at the mirror and say, I want to be a man today. I want to be a woman. You just are one. That's who you are. Now you need to live up to who you are. So as a man, there are certain things that go along with being a man. Men need to be gentlemen. Somebody say gentlemen. That means you need to open the doors for the ladies. You need to be kind and respectful. You, you need to pay for things, gentlemen. Amen. And so those are duties. Now, men can become better men. Men can become more effective at being men, better uh, gentlemen, more respectable. And the same thing with women. The Bible says, and I'm just going to have to say it just the way the Bible says, to be quiet and submissive. Oh, it gets all quiet right now. The women don't like me and the men are afraid to say amen. But that's what the Bible says, that women shouldn't be breaking their necks, snapping their fingers, getting all upset. But women should be quiet and submissive. That doesn't mean you got to stay at home barefooted, taking care of the kids and cooking. It just says you should have a quiet spirit and a humble spirit and be, be pretty on the inside just like you are on the outside with a pretty attitude. Are you all listening to me? And so the same thing is here with salt and light. You could kind of see them complimenting each other and that they are speaking metaphorically of who we are. But the question isn't, are you this? Because we've already settled, you are salt, you are light as a Christian. The question is, what kind of salt are you and what are you doing with your light? The question to a man isn't, are you a man? DNA, physical evidence, yes, you're a man. No, but what kind of man are you? Are you a man that just makes babies and doesn't take care of your children? I just saw on the news there's a man now that they have found that he has fathered 30 children with 14 different women. Anybody seen that? And it wasn't on an Inquirer in the magazine. It was just on a normal news channel. 40 children, a 30, 40 children with 14 different women. Now, we would say to him, what kind of man are you? We wouldn't say, are you a man? No, it's obvious. You're a man. You're getting the job done, right? But you're not a good man. You're not a responsible man. And we could say the same thing to the women that keep falling for this joker's tricks. What is wrong with you, honey? How many did you drink last night to look at this dude and think he's a good one? Is he really all that? Did, did you not know that his cell phone was blowing up all the time with all them baby mamas? So we would say, we know you're a woman because you bore the children. But are you a smart woman? We don't know. See, the question isn't, are you salt or light? No, the Bible says you are that. The question is, what kind of salt are you and what are you doing with your light? Let's look at salt. Now, we all know what salt is. Salt is a preservative. It's a mineral that's found upon this earth. It's generally used for preserving and flavoring things, but it can also use to, pers uh, to purify things. So it can purify, it can preserve, and it can season. How many here know how to season some food with some salt and maybe some Goya, maybe a little Tony's, a little some cayenne pepper? Come on. You know how to use it. How many have ever made something and put too much salt and it wasn't good, right? I remember one time I was making uh, cookies. My mom wasn't home, and, you know, I took a bag that looked just like sugar, and I put a cup of it in there. But when I went to taste it, it was not sweet at all. I used the salt instead of the sugar. Has anybody ever done that before? I've done that. I'm telling on myself. I'm the weirdie. That's okay. So the, the question is, we know what even salt is. So Jesus is not saying you, you are the, uh, the nuclear protoplasm of life. You, you, you are the microbiological form of life. No, he doesn't go into some deep thing. He says salt. You see it everywhere you go. You, you cook with it. You eat with it. They're no different than us. He says that's what you are. Who, me? Yes, that's what you are. But if you lose your saltiness, how do you get salty again? It says it's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. What's the difference between the salt we put on the table and the salt we put out on the streets in the winter? 
It's really the same kind of mineral, sodium chloride. It's the same thing coming out from the earth, which is left over from oceans evaporating. That's where salt comes from. But what is the difference to you and I, thinking people, rational people? Do you look at that salt in the front of your house and go, I'm going to save money on salt today, honey. Go get me a bucket here. All this is right here. I mean, we're thinking about buying it. Just put it right in here, grind it up. Let's just put it in my... uh, you know, put it on our salad. Now, technically, you could do that. You would be crazy. We would not want to eat your food, but you could do that. But what is the main difference between that salt and that salt that's in that nice little clear glass bottle or a container with the little silver top that you see at restaurants? The difference is purity. Purity. You see that other salt that they're pouring on the ground, they just dug that up. It's got dirt in it. It's got a whole lot of other junk in it. So it is not salty as salt can be when it's purified from all of that other junk. And the question that I want to ask you today is what kind of salt are you? Are you the kind when we get around you, we can taste the goodness of God, the flavor of the Holy Spirit, Lord, when we get around you, is it, oh, what's wrong with that person's attitude? What's wrong with the way that person talks? I just get this nasty feeling and taste in my mouth when I hear them talk and what I see on their Facebook, how they treat their wife. Look at your neighbor and say, it just got real. You see, the question is, what kind of salt are you? already salt. But are you the pure kind of salt that God can use? Or are you the kind of salt that is getting polluted by this world? If you're getting polluted by this world, not me, but Jesus says, you're good for nothing except to be trampled on by men. Now that's got a sting right there. It is no longer good for anything. Just make sure I'm not reading into this too much. It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. Did I do a pretty good job as your preacher summarizing that? If you're not the right kind of salt, according to Jesus, you're good for nothing but to be trampled on by men. That should be to us a severe warning. That if we don't get our life right, God is going to say to us, you're good for nothing. You're good for nothing. Now, I want you to see this in another passage where Jesus actually deals with people that aren't living the way they're supposed to. Will you go with me to Revelation chapter 3, verse 16? And as you're on your way there, would you go, ooh, come on, Revelation. It's going to get real right now. You know when we go to the last book, it's going to be tight but right. Now, Jesus, who always loves metaphors because he's from heaven where we've never been, so the only way he can communicate heavenly truths to us is by using earthly metaphors. No one's ever been to heaven. We don't know what it looks like and have come back to tell about it. So every time he talks to us, he's got to use metaphors. In the one right before in Matthew, he's saying, you're like salt and light. This time he's going to use hot and cold. Look at verse 16. He says, So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. See, Jesus said to these people, you make me puke. Has anybody ever tasted something lukewarm that was either supposed to be hot or cold and you spit it out? Maybe milk that had been laying around stagnant and you forgot you left it out and you quickly, you know, you drank it and you quickly spit it out. Here's a little side note with me, not quite related, but somewhat related. I drank alcohol a couple days ago. I think it was vodka and a few other drinks, Uh, rum and a whole bunch of stuff. Now, as you're looking at me crazy, let me tell you the story, okay? So, now that I got your attention, my friend wanted to take me to Fogo de Chao. He's traveling to Guatemala. Those of you from Guatemala, I have a friend there visiting. And he wanted to go to this uh, Brazilian steakhouse. He had heard so much about it. And so we show up over there, and we're having a good time. And they make this lemon drink that is out of this world. And by the way, I don't go there often, just birthday and anniversaries type stuff, okay? So we get there. He's new. I'm trying to explain to him, you know, you flip over this card. If it's green, they come to your uh, table with a freshly skewered and barbecued meat they cut it put it right on the table and when you're done you flip it over on the red and then you eat and as long as you have it on green they're just going to keep coming how many have ever 
done it. Okay, I'm weird, but just keep track. It's good, by the way. So they're coming with food and all this. And, and so I'm explaining this to him while the waitress is there. And I'm like, I want this lemony drink that is so awesome. I get it every time with my wife. And she's like, she said some name. And I'm like, yeah, that name. Okay. So how many already know where the story is going right now? Okay. So she said that name, and this thing came, and it looked a little different. That should have clued me in. And so I, I'm thirsty. You guys know me. If you've ever been out to eat, I'm a guzzler. I had about two or three big guzzles before I spit it back out because that drink was some, it, it was white like this with some lemon in it, and it was strong. And I just said, what was in it? And the first word I heard her say was vodka and a whole bunch of other stuff. Now, don't y'all be using it as an excuse now to try that. Well, Path, I didn't know. I didn't know. I was just like you. I spit it out of my mouth. And the weird thing is, this is so weird because my wife's laughing in the back. Four years ago, I was at an outreach, very much the same thing. We were out at a bar and grill, bar and grill, and we were out there at the top of the, you know, outside, and we were all thirsty, and I was talking again. I wasn't paying attention, and I saw this, this lemonade. It's always lemonade. I don't know what's up with lemonade, and what are people spiking lemonade for? What's going on with our culture all jacked up and crazy? So... I just point to this thing, and I just say, I want this right here, what this is, because it was lemonade. This thing came in a bottle, had a screw on top to it. I'm like, yeah, this is the kind of lemonade I want. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my gosh, it was so hot. It was like July, and oh, I just drank it. And then once again, what did I have to spit out? Mike's Hard Lemonade, which now they have commercials about, and I understand what it is. So two times, being a lemonade drinker has got me in trouble. Probably more me running my mouth, not paying attention to what I'm ordering. But I had to spit it out because it was repulsive to me. And by the way, man, I forgot how nasty alcohol tastes. Kids, it is nasty. It is nasty. It is not good tasting. No matter how cool they make it look like on TV, it is not fun, cool at tasting. It is not even good tasting. It's nasty. And I was so repulsed by it. It was it just, you know, it just had to come out. Even before I recognized that it was alcohol, and I'm convicted to drink it by the Lord, but it was just the nasty taste of it. And I'm thinking about what Jesus is saying here. He says, you're neither hot nor cold, but because you're lukewarm, I'm about ready to spit you out of my mouth. Kind of like, you know, my mom, she would make coffee, and sometimes she would set it down, and she would forget about it, and then she would come back, and then she would taste it, and it was neither hot nor cold, and she would spit it out. Or a time I was with my friend, and they had left milk around, and they had curdled, and they didn't know about it, and then they took a drink out of it, and then they had to spit it out. See, the God, God is telling us here as Christians, as believers, we can either be hot or cold, but lukewarm gets spit out of his mouth. And look at the things that they were saying, why they were saying that they don't need to be hot or cold. Look at verse 17. You say, I'm rich. I've acquired wealth. I do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and to put salve on your eyes so that you can see. Verse 19, those whom I love, I rebuke. Everybody say, Jesus loves me so much, he rebukes me and he disciplines me. Amen. So be earnest and repent. Now quickly turn to Galatians chapter 5, and I'm going to give you the things in your life that can make you lukewarm and have you lose your saltiness, that can take away the purity of that salt that God wants you to have. And you can have these things as a Christian. Somebody say a Christian. Come on, I'm not talking about devil worshipers. I'm not talking about people that go to psychics. By the way, I saw they just started Enlightenment Corner down here on Six Corners with a woman that does psychic readings and all that. Anybody wants to follow Jared and I, I just heard the Lord tell me we're going to show up there and preach the gospel to them. Amen? So go see Jared. We'll tell you the day we're going to go over there, and we're going to lay hands on that place and believe God to set her free. Amen? I've been waiting to cast out a devil. It's been a while. Amen? Sometimes I only see it in India. we got to find them here. Amen? you got to go on a casting out the devil hunt amen and if i get arrested somebody post bail for me please somebody come down there and see me amen we're going to do our best not to let that happen 
What's funny, by the way, people have said to me, Pastor, you ever get punched or anything? I say, no, I've never got punched or anything. But my friend Wayne, he's about this big. He gets punched all the time. <laughs> Can't figure out why he keeps getting punched. I don't get punched. I think because they look at me, they're, they're drunk, and they're like, I'm going to hit you. And I think they look at me, and they're like, nah, that's probably not the Christian I want to hit. <laughs> he looks saved, but I don't know how saved he is. <laughs> And I always used to tell them that, too, when I was at Mardi Gras witnessing on the streets. And they would get, more to happen if I punch you? You don't want to find out. I've only been saved a year. I'm in Bible college. I ain't got much to lose. <laughs> oh, praise him. Some of y'all think I'm kidding, but it's serious. That's why you got to pray for your pastor. Look at verse 18 of Galatians chapter 5, but if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law, verse 19. So that means if we're doing what's right by God's Word, we don't need to be told how bad things can be because we should be living for God. We don't need to be told don't murder, don't steal, because people living for God should do that. But if you're not, this is what you're going to do. Verse 19, the acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. How many know that sounds like Jersey Shore right there? How many know that just sounds like some of the movies some of y'all went and watched last night? How many know that sounds like Hangover 1 and 2? Looks like what you see all the time on TV. He says, I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay? So we're all salt as Christians. But what kind of salt are we? Are we that dirty kind of salt with the deeds of the flesh in our life where God looks at us and says, I want to puke you out of my mouth. You're good for nothing except to be trampled on by men. At this point, it's good for me to remind you that there's a place called hell, my friends. Hell is just not for rapists and murderers and genocidal maniacs. Hell is for anyone that lives without Christ and his commands. Jesus told us those things. He said in John 14, 16, if you love me, you will obey what I've commanded. And then in 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, John, the beloved disciple of Jesus, says this, if we say we know him but do not live like him, we are a liar and the truth is not in us. All those who say they know him ought to also live like him. If you say you know him, but you're not living like him, you're a liar. If you're letting these things get in your life, saying, I'm rich, I'm okay, I have no problems, get out of my business, pastor. You're not realizing that you could be in danger of getting spit out of Jesus' mouth, being thrown on the ground, and being trampled in hellfire. What are the things that we shouldn't have in our life? What are those things that dirty that salt? Sexual impurity. Sexual immorality and debauchery, three things that sex will mess with your spiritual life. Sex outside of marriage is sexual immorality. Impurity is sexual things, whether with men, with men, women, with men, women. And debauchery is being dirty in your mind, perversion, pornography. So don't have sex unless you are in a monogamous, heterosexual relationship. That is the only time sex or sexual things can be done. Married, man and one, one, one man, one woman, in a monogamous relationship. Men having sex with women outside of marriage, that's sexually immoral. Men having sex with men, that's sexually immoral. Men having sex with multiple women, polygamy, and marrying them, that's immoral. And if we don't understand it sexually in those terms, he says it right down at the end, orgies is also a sin, and that's in your Bible. That's a weird word to see in your Bible, isn't it? They even have it in the children's version, my friends. That's, that's crazy. And think about in our culture how normal that word has become now. Where before, even when I was growing up, that was crazy. You didn't see girl on girl, guy on girl. You didn't see sex parties. You didn't see marriage swinging couples. That was kind of underground in the 80s and 90s. Now they're flaunting it. Are you listening? Okay. 
Sexual immorality, to have sex with somebody you're not married to. Impurity, to do everything but sex. Oral sex, heavy petting and touching and nudity, sexual behaviors. And then debauchery is the perversion of the mind. So what is the sexual uh, way to live for, as a Christian? Find a man or woman, get married, and stay sexually active with them. Everything else is impure. Thinking of naked people and women and pornography and men and all that is impure. And doing sexual things, same sex is impure. All of it's impure. And it's said in those three words. The next one, idolatry. Idolatry is to place anything above God. Now, we would say, well, I don't have a Buddha in my house. I'm not bowing down to a statue. But what's that 65-inch thing you got in the, in the living room? Do you spend more time with that than you do with Jesus? Gets quiet when I preach like this. It's time, but it's right. What about your gym? Fellas go in there pumping iron three, four, five times a week. Still only about a buck 25. Hello? That gym has become your idol. It was the last time you lifted some spiritual uh, weights with Jesus. Anything you put before God and your attention towards God is an idol. He says, you have no other gods before me. Witchcraft. Witchcraft is the practicing of magical arts and potions. Do you know what they call that word in Greek, witchcraft? It's pharmakeia. What does the word pharmakeia sound like today in English? Pharmacies. In the time of the Greco-Roman Empire, drugs were done in witchcraft seances. They were connected to religion as, as similar as peyote and marijuana was to the American Indian. That's how it was in their day. So people come to me and go, hey, man, it doesn't talk about not smoking weed in the Bible, man. Like every herb is given for our good. Praise the Lord. Jaw. You know, and they want to become Rastafarian smoking weed. Somebody's like that. Come on, I know I'm preaching to somebody today. If not you, it's your neighbor, amen? When you feel that coming from their room or their house, that's not a, that's not a candle or, air, or, or you know, some type of air freshener. That's weed. They're smoking weed, amen? Praise God. Somebody would say, well, it doesn't tell me not to smoke weed. Right there it does. Pharmakeia, practicing magical arts with potions. Those drugs, we call them recreational now. Those are potions. It's no coincidence that I did all the crazy stuff I did high on drugs because drugs open you up to a spiritual realm whether you're aware of it or not. Stay away from drugs. Stay away from witchcraft. Hatred, discord. You can't hate people. You've got to forgive your enemies. Discord, causing trouble. Jealousy, being jealous of what somebody else has. See, it moved away from the real crazy stuff to stuff that I think we could deal with every day. If you're ever jealous of the promotion, you know, something that somebody else gets, your neighbor gets promoted, better car, better house, young people, nicer shoes, nicer iPad, etc., nicer iPhone. Jealousy will destroy the saltiness of your life. Fits of rage. Fits of rage is anger out of control. We see it all the time in traffic. And I always joke about it, but really, have we ever stopped and just thought about how crazy people are in this city? I'm talking screaming at the top of their lungs. I was driving out to Fox River on an Algonquin Road, and I, I mean, these are suburban people are just as crazy as Chicago people, yelling and screaming, and then the guy peeled out. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm about ready to watch somebody die. And I'm serious, man. People in Chicago have fits of rage over traffic because our culture is like that, selfish ambition, doing things just for ourselves. Dissensions and factions mean to gossip and cause problems with your friends and family. Does anybody ever know, uh, has anybody ever here ever met a gossip? Okay, now, a gossip, a gossiper. Sorry if you didn't hear me correctly. Got a little slur today. What's going on? Anybody ever here ever met a gossip? Has anybody here ever met a gossip? Okay, raise your hand. Okay, all the rest of you not raising your hand, look at them because those are the ones gossiping because they ain't raising their hands. Okay, now back to what it is, what factions and envy, dissensions, what they do is people go behind other people's back. Oh, did you know so-and-so said this about you? Did you know so-and-so did this? And they cause problems. Drunkenness means to indulge in alcohol to the point of not being able to use your faculties. Orgies, we've already discussed that and the like. I warn you, as I did before, those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Will you turn with me back to Matthew 5 in closing? Band, would you come, please? We're going to close out today. 
Because the same principles of the salt being purified also apply to the light. And we're going to close out today with these illustrations. You are the salt of the earth, but if it loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? Question mark. It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. What will take away the saltiness of your life? What will make it like that salt that's thrown on the ground? The sinful things that we read in Galatians chapter 5. What will purify it again? What Revelations chapter 3, 16 and onward says, repenting and coming to the Lord and he will be a purifying fire within you and make you white again, make you salty again. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. They put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. You see, what are you doing with your light? Galatians continues to go on and says, don't do the deeds of the flesh, but do the fruit of the Spirit. Love. You are a beacon of love in this world. Don't hide your love. Let your love be like a city on a hill where everybody can see the love of God. When it's dark on the job and nobody can see love on that job, you shine love on that job joy in the darkness of this world when nobody has joy don't hide your joy and be ashamed of your joy put your joy on display because in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy and at his right hand are pleasures forevermore look at your neighbor and say neighbor it's time to shine baby Come on, it is time to shine. It's time to let the love shine. Don't hide it. It's time to let joy come out of your life and shine to this world. Peace. How many have some peace on the inside that even passes your own understanding? You can't even explain it to your neighbor how you can go through what you're going through, but you can get your shine on. You can shine peace. Patience, shining patience. God help me to shine patience with my wife and kids. Hallelujah. Shine that patience. Say you're sorry when you're wrong and impatient. Kindness. Shine your kindness to this world. Be kind in traffic. Be kind to your neighbor. Goodness. Shine goodness wherever you are, especially young people. Somebody at your school is just looking for a friend at the lunch table. Shine your goodness. Hey, is anybody sitting here? Can I be your friend? Can I get to know you? I'm not weird. I don't mean like that, but I just want to shine some goodness. Faithfulness. Shine your faithfulness. Don't quit. Don't quit on your marriage. Don't quit on your children. Don't quit on getting out there and finding another job. Don't quit on realigning your life. Don't quit on your walk with the Lord. Don't quit on discipleship. Shine your faithfulness. Show people an example of what it's like to serve the Lord. Gentleness. Somebody needs to be gentle in this world. We're all so harsh and quick to be angry. Somebody needs to come out from under the bowl, the, the bushel, and put some gentleness on their job. Put some gentleness in their family. Be polite. Use manners. Don't be rude. And last of all, we need to have, well, there is no uh, self-control. There is one more. Somebody say self-control. Shine self-control to this world we're obese like we've never been because we can't control our eating we're having more addiction to prescription drugs more people today are addicted to shopping and all of these addictions that come into our life would you shine the self-control you might say pastor i don't know if i have love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness and self-control you're right you don't god has it and he's already given it to you and he says you're salt and he says is your light so what does he ask you to do Matthew chapter 5 let your good deeds shine before the men of this world let God make you good on the inside walk by his spirit and he'll purify that soul and set your life on fire and I love what John Wesley said God set my life on fire so the world can watch me burn if you want to be the salt and light that he calls you to be would you stand to your feet raise your hands to heaven 
oven and say, Lord, make me salty and set my life on fire. Altar workers, would you come? We're going to close out in prayer. Come on, just ask the Lord to make you salty. If there's anything that I mentioned today that needs to be purified out of your heart, we're going to ask you to come forward when we dismiss to receive prayer so that you can get set free from that junk. If there's anything in your life that I name from that deed of the flesh, let Jesus purify you. And today, if you want increase of the fire of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control, you need to come forward. We're going to pray those things to shine through you for the world to see. Father, I thank you today that you have called us to be salt and light and Lord, it starts here in my life. Come on, make it personal right now before you go. It starts in my life, God. I don't want to be thrown out and trampled by men. I don't want to hide under a bushel, under a, under a bucket, God. I want to shine for you, Jesus. I don't have to be light and I don't have to be salt. You've already made me. But Lord, I decide today what kind of salt I want to be and where I want my light to be. And I decide today to be salty for you. To season this world with the good cayenne pepper of life to purify it to preserve my family with the things that you're doing in my life God oh God and shine through me Jesus even when I don't feel like it God would you shine through me Lord come on I just feel the anointing on that before we go come on just shine through me Jesus Come on, some of you right now, you know you just need a dose of the Holy Ghost. You need to get some more of the fruit of the Spirit budding off your life right now. Shine for Jesus. Shine for the Lord. Let people see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. And Lord, as we do those things, oh God, as we do them, give us the strength to always give you the glory because we don't make ourselves salt and light let us always remember to say thank you for what you do in us and through us in Jesus name if you love the Lord can I hear an amen today amen can you bless him today God bless you thank you for coming you are dismissed but we're going to stay up here and worship those that want to sing songs with us or if you need prayer for anything Come forward. We'll pray with you now. Otherwise, you're dismissed. We'll see you at life groups. Thank you for coming by this morning. God bless you.